going at the end. <laughs> wow, man, that got some of y'all excited, huh? Wow, man, I, I sense the presence of God here today in a very powerful way, and uh, so appreciative of that. Look, we're going to take up our offering here, and uh, we'd like uh, Justin and his crew to come, and uh, as they come, it's been a, uh, a challenging week, to say the least, for some families within our church, and uh, for a lot of us involved in ministering to them, and and just coming alongside of them, um, but uh, you know, at 4:30 last Sunday afternoon, uh, Brother Larry Wooten's mother uh, left this life and went to be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, right? And at 4:30 Sunday afternoon, he was on his way to his son and daughter-in-law's house because they were having a gender reveal get together. Anybody want to take a guess? You, you, it's a 50-50 shot <laughs> on what the gender is. It's a girl. I chose boy, but it wasn't my way, uh, and I chose wrong. That's right. Um, but the irony or not so much the irony, but the, the beautiful truth that I see in all of this, and I see it a lot. I've seen it a lot over the years. So on the same day that God took the matriarch of their family on the Wooten side home, he gave them another girl, a new baby coming into the family. And, of course... Justin's sister, Danielle, Larry's daughter, is expecting a girl due real soon. So another one. So that'll, that'll be three girls. For the grand, I know what that's like. <laughs> and, uh, but on the same day that happened, and on Thursday we had a celebration of life here, and the family would like to express to you how much your ministry to them meant. You cooked food. You called some of you were able to come to the service. Some of you wanted to come and couldn't come, and you expressed that to them. And they told me specifically, said, our church family has just been so good to us. And could you let them know that we appreciate it very much? And so thank you for your love for them. Also, we need to be in prayer for uh, um, the Riley's grandson who uh, was born and came home and then had to be brought to the hospital and uh, he's home now. Jim was proudly showing us, showing everybody in his little circle around there, just his beautiful little handsome self, the little picture of his grandson. And uh, we're happy for y'all that whew, stress level can come down there. And then one other situation. Um, we mentioned him last week, and I asked his permission for us to share. We're not going to go into a lot of detail, but we will tell you this. So Eric's dad... Jerry Harris, who's a member here, um, Jerry had a procedure done and uh, found out that he does have uh, cancer uh, of the bladder, and, um, but we feel good, they feel good about, about how far this thing can go, and uh, he's going to have another procedure in four to six weeks, then they're going to decide on treatment. So be in prayer for them in that, and uh, we're going to lift them up to the Lord as we pray together. I know there's so many other needs, and the Lord knows what they are, and he provides for us, and he meets us at the point of our weakness, and we're grateful for that. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful that you always meet us right where we need it the most and when we need it the most. Thank you for your presence in this very building today, thank you for your presence with us through the very difficult times of life. We pray for the Wooten family and we lift them up to you and we continue to pray for them. We thank you for Miss Jean and all that she was and who she is in your very presence today. Thank you for this new baby girl that you have blessed their family with. 
We pray for Danielle, their daughter, as she's going to be giving birth very soon. We thank you for the Riley grandbaby that he is home and doing much better. We pray for Jerry Harris today. Jerry, Tammy, and the entire family, Brother Eric and Alicia. We ask that you would give them peace and healing through all of this. Thank you that you have chosen to meet with us today. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated as we take up our offering, as the offering plate comes around. While it's coming around, you'll see the title page is up there um, on the screens. You'll notice it's not the book of Acts. We are in our month of sabbatical, and in the past, during our month of rest, I've preached series on rest and um, didn't want to do that this month, but every year I'm going to at least attempt to bring a message. It's funny, though, last year I brought a message from this exact passage, but I'm bringing a totally different message. Um, I redid the entire message, three different complete points that I want you to see that God has spoken to me about when it comes to rest for the weary. Rest for the weary. Uh, You know, the Bible says um, in the Old Testament that we as shepherds need to know the state of our flocks. Um, I think one of the gifts I think God gives pastors is to have a sense, I don't mean to say a feeling, but a sense or a, a discernment about where we are. Um, and sometimes it's more clear than others. Sometimes I don't see it right away. And uh, the one of the things I try to do, if you will, if, if I can, is to have my, to keep my ear to the ground as to where we are collectively as a, as a body. And, um, you know, I I tell people this, while you might be responsible for the children's ministry or for um, Wednesday night Bible study in this area and how it affects you and and all of that, I'm responsible as pastor to try to see the bigger picture and to oversee as the Bible leads me um, the entire ministry of the church. And one of those responsibilities that God's given me is to help you and me (laughs) realize that we can burn ourselves out in the service of the Lord. It's not lost on me that the vast majority of the ministry that takes place here takes place by people who work full-time jobs outside of this place or people who work two jobs And then they still find time to do a ministry here and to serve. And I think it's incumbent upon me as a pastor to remind you, and myself as well, the flock of God, that we need to learn biblical rest and why it's important. Because if we don't do it, we're not going to finish well. And it's important that we finish well. One of my heroes in the faith, if you will, maybe not a hero, but a mentor in the faith, is Charles Stanley, and he went to be with the Lord just recently. And one of the things that he taught was how to finish well. And that was something that was very important in his life. And he went through a lot of struggles. I mean, his wife left him, and to to his dying day, he didn't know why. And... He went through a lot of struggle. And I would even say to this day that he has a son who's a pastor who uh, is actually disgracefully walking away from the Word of God, in my opinion. And I think that it was very difficult on Dr. Stanley's heart. And but as he aged, and as he transitioned in life, I think he finished well. And I think he learned how to rest. You know, uh, he and Andy, his son, actually had, had, you can look it up on YouTube. Um, Andy interviewed his dad late in life, and um, they talk about these these five, six, seven-week vacations that the family would take. 
nonstop. Man, if I tried to take a seven-week vacation, y'all would have appointed a new pastor by the time I got back. <laughs> but he saw the need for rest and why it was important. And it's not just important for pastors. It's important for a lot of you. And as I've been here 20, going on 28 and a half years, uh, I think it's very important that I help you see the need for rest. And in turn, you help me see the very need myself. So let's take the Bible and let's go to Matthew, tw- uh, Matthew 11. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Rest for the weary. Let's stand together, everybody. Rest for the weary. And like I said, a year ago, I preached exactly on this passage, but this is a completely fresh message with fresh insight that God has given me here. Come to me, Jesus says. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Now, notice the matter-of-factness of this statement. And I will give you rest. Do you see it? A lot of us, at times, wonder if we'll ever find rest. But Jesus said, if you come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, it is a fact, it is a promise That he will give us the rest that we need. But he says here, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, thank you for the, the greatness of your word thank you that your word is living and that's something we may have seen months ago in the passage you help us to see something different like you have in my life here this week help us impart these biblical concepts so that we can be strong for you We won't burn out. We won't fizzle out. We're in for the long haul. And you will give us what we need when we need it as we follow your prescribed biblical plan. May those who are in this building who are burdened with the challenges of life And who are weary, maybe from outside forces or their own sinful failures, that they would see that in Jesus, they can have health, they can have healing. And I prayed in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to give you three points, but before I do that, I want to make a statement here, and it's this. Rest. It is needed because of the wearisome and burdened journey. It is needed because of the wearisome and burdened journey. Now, last year I pointed that out, but I want to go a little deeper with this intro here. The word weary in this text means to be worn out, to faint, to be exhausted. The result of hard or difficult endeavor. It has the concept of difficult labor or to be fatigued. So the word weary here is pretty much self-explanatory. It's when we are exhausted from a task, we are wore out, we have been fatigued. Now, that's part of the human condition, that taking on a task 
and doing it and accomp accomplishing it will get you tired and weary. There are times in life and in ministry that you find yourself tired from doing good. And you feel good about being tired like that, correct? Not only that, but you can do something physical. I don't know about you all, but when I build something, Penny always asks me, you know, I thought you finished two hours ago. Where did you go? And I'm like, I've been here drinking a cup of coffee looking at it. <laughs> looking at every angle and feeling satisfied with what I accomplished. Don't you feel that way sometimes when you do something? It's, like, it's, it's just like the person that, that's mowing their lawn and did, did, did landscaping. and They get on their porch and it starts raining in the afternoon. And man, they get a glass of iced tea and they just look. They're in a daze because they're look how beautiful. And yes, it's God's creation, but I did that. You ever feel that way? You take a picture and put it on social media and, and you, you wonder why everyone isn't just gloating over it. Because they didn't do it, but you did. And you also feel fatigued in doing it. So not all weariness is bad. It comes from a good place because of the world we live in. And the word burden means to carry more. Now check this out. It means to overload. <laughs> the freight of a ship. Some of us are carrying the load of a cargo ship in our lives. And we're the size of a bay boat. <clears throat> and so Jesus is pointing out and saying something here. He is saying, all you who are weary... You're tired, you're fatigued. You are burdened down with some heavy burdens. You have taken on, and I'm not saying that that's always bad. It's come upon you, sometimes not by choice, to carry the burden. Some of you have had to raise your grandchildren, and it's a burden that you have had to take on, and it's a heavy load. Some of you have had to... <laughs> Help your adult children and in ways that, that you just, you, you're like, when are they going to start carrying their own load? You follow me? Some of you have had to carry the burden of a friend, a brother or sister in Christ. The Bible says to carry each other's burdens. You've had to stand in the gap and pray for somebody and help them. Through their weakness and God has chosen you to do that and it's a heavy burden but we've not been designed to live our lives carrying all of those burdens all the time so some of you <clears throat> are carrying a cargo ship of burdens in your life and then you wonder <laughs> you're tired you're fatigued and then you allow Satan to tell you what a rotten Christian you are because you're not as strong as you think you ought to be and you feel like your knees are buckling under the weight. Well, it's because you have taken on these burdens. Some of them have been placed upon you, not by design on your part. And you become tired and weary. I know this, in my own life, I've had to mitigate some of how I consume information now because it was becoming so burdensome the way I was doing it. That's why I've limited my social media uh, interactions and uh, for, for me, and I'm not saying this for any of you. I'm, I'm glad some of you have Facebook because you keep me informed. You kind of tell me. But I'm glad I don't have it anymore. Because it unburdened me from burdens that I was carrying that were never meant to be carried in that way. So whatever it is, at times in life we find ourselves overwhelmed. Burdens become heavy and we become wearisome. But here's, but here's the thing now. 
The thing is, what do you do with that? Some people give up. Some people have a breakdown. Some people just, it, it, they, they, as we say, they fall off the wagon. Some people turn to alcohol. Some people turn to drugs. I mean, I, I, I hate to keep bringing this up and saying, some people turn to pornography. I mean, it's a reality. So Jesus acknowledged the fact that there are going to be times when you are weary and burdened. But for the Christian, we have a responsibility to respond in the right way. I want to give you three ways on how to respond. The first one is this. How to respond and how to get the rest that you need. Come to Jesus. Verse 28. Boy, I tell you what, it doesn't take a theological brainiac to figure, figure this out. Look at what it says. Come to me. I'm a simple man. I'm simple-minded. And I'm reading this, and I see it right here. Here's a command. Come to me, Jesus said. We need to first recognize that we need to come to Jesus. Notice I put here in, on the slide, Pharisees said, you must do. Jesus says, you must come. Now, Jesus said to do certain things, but the Pharisees were heaping upon people the burdensome load of all the extra man-made rules that God never designed for people to carry. And that was their focus. You must do this and do that and do this and not do this and not do that. But Jesus said, the answer to your weariness and burdensome is to seek me and to come to me. I know this sounds very simple, but folks, listen. He's the answer. He's the what? The alpha and the what? Meaning in the Greek alphabet, the alpha, he is the first letter, and omega, he is the last letter. Meaning he is everything in between. He is, he is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The Bible says that Jesus says of himself, I am. And God, when speaking to Moses in the Old Testament, said to tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you, Yahweh. The answer to all of life's difficulties and challenges starts and ends with Jesus. Oh, the heavy load we carry that we can offload if we'll just give it to him. Church, listen. Some of us have taken on the burden Look, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have a prayer burden for our loved ones if they're not where they need to be with the Lord. I mean, we care, correct? And we want them to know the truth but some of us take on that burden of our adult children or our teenage children and we worry so much and it's a burden that we carry when in reality they belong to God just like you belong to God Amen. Penny my wife has a has a saying and it's 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 I mean it, it's true and it's helped us through so many things. It's reminded me over the years. And saying, you know, listen, Corey, this is not our problem. They belong to Jesus. And you and I have to give it to God. Pray for them, yes. But give it to God. Give it to Jesus. Put them in Jesus' hands. 
And everywhere they go, pray that they would be reminded of the words of Jesus. They would be reminded of what they've been taught. They would be reminded of the truth of the gospel. And then what happens is, so you offload that burden and you give it to Jesus because he wants that burden and it's his. And he will take it from you. So he says here, come to me. Come to me. So this invitation is open to those who are exhausted and burdened down. That is exactly how the people felt under the yoke of pharisaical legalism. The second thing I want you to see is this. Jesus said this. He says, take my yoke upon you. So the first thing we need to do is come to Jesus. The second thing is we need to take from Jesus. You say, oh. Is that biblical? Yeah, it's right there. He says, come to me, and then he says, take my yoke. His yoke is tailor-made for our lives, Warren Wiersbe says. A yoke was a wooden, um, two-piece, tool to keep oxen together, working together, and it would be put around their necks. And it could be, they could be heavy and burdensome to those oxen. And Jesus was explaining to them and using something that they fully understood because it's something that most of them dealt with every day. And what Jesus is saying is, he says, you come and take my yoke. Because he says this, he goes, I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is a deeper experience when we come to Christ by faith. Jesus is saying, not just come to me, but now come and take. Come and take what I've I've given you. What did Jesus say? I have come that you might have life and that you might have it how? More abundantly. My peace I give you, he says. When we take his yoke and learn, we find rest, that deeper rest of surrender and obedience. In taking upon that yoke, we find peace, the peace of God, Romans 5, 1, and Philippians 4, 6 through 8. To take a yoke in that day also meant to become a disciple. When we submit to Christ, we are yoked to him. And the word easy means well-fitting. So he has just the yoke tailor-made for our lives and our needs. So take from me. It's there for the taking, y'all. The rest that Jesus has for you and me is not some elusive thing that only super spiritual Christians can get. It's for anyone. Notice what he says here. He says, come to me all you who are weary. Just come to him. Come his way. And take what he has to offer. It's a gift. It's like receiving salvation. Now, some scholars believe this is talking about, you know, salvation. I think it can apply both here to salvation and discipleship. In salvation, you find that when you come to Jesus and you receive the free gift that he gives you, he unburdens you from the sin and all of those things. But even as Christians, this is a biblical principle to come and and take from him. You're not taking in a in an ungrateful and ungodly way, you're coming and doing exactly what he said. He's got all of this to offer. Come and take. Here's what I've got. He has peace that's beyond all human understanding. He has kindness and love. He has rest. Here's the problem, though. In order to come to Jesus and take what he has, we've got to offload 
what we have taken upon and give it to him. And what, what that means is this. It means that he's God and I'm not. Amen. The world doesn't revolve around me. It's about him. And yes, I'm responsible for what God has given me in, 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 in my sphere, in, in my life. I understand that. But at the same time, I'm not the God of my life. He is. And so Jesus has something for you. And the Bible says to take. And I want you to see the last thing. And it's this. So we're to come to Jesus, take from Jesus. We're to learn from Jesus. His commands are burdenless. It frees us from bondage. Learn from Jesus. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. What are you learning from him? First of all, you learn that he says, I am gentle and humble in heart. You know, when you sin, you carry the burden of unconfessed sin, conviction and guilt that comes from Satan. Conviction that comes from the Holy Spirit. And you hold on to it. But when you come to Jesus and you take from him and you're willing to learn from him, you learn how to give that to him and you realize, man, he's gentle. He's ready to forgive. He's ready to strengthen. I don't know about you, but when I sin, I believe that God should kill me. What, what, what I know from God's Word. In other words, what, what I know and where I'm at in my spiritual life and in, in, in spiritual maturity is almost no excuse for me to have a bad attitude. There's almost no excuse for me to not apply the things of Scripture. But yet, I struggle with that from time to time because I'm a human being. And you know what I find when I go to Jesus? I don't find a stern finger pointing at me and say, let, let me tell you something, boy, you should have learned this by now, and I'm going to make you do this. And no, no, what I, what, I, what I sense is when I bow my head and I say, Lord, I can't believe I failed in that area. I, I know that lady comes to church, and I'm sorry for giving her the sign language in traffic. And you think, you know, you deserve to die for that. Because you know better than that. And you start thinking, man, I'm, I'm supposed to be this mature Christian. Now, trust me, I've never done that. I have wanted to. And don't look at me with judgmental eyes, because you have to. You've wanted to. I've not done it to a church member, let's put it to you that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. But when you do that, no, what do you get from God when you come with a humble heart, you come wanting to repent, you get from him. I love you. He's easy. He's forgiving. He's like, Corey, I'm not putting this overwhelming burden on you, but you need to cast your care upon me. And all that anxiety that you're building up, that's not from me. And you could have avoided this entire situation if you would have learned how to come to me when you're weary and how to learn from me. I'm going to confess something to you. Penny and I won't be here next weekend. It wasn't in my plans to miss a Sunday this summer, but we're, we're going to. Um, been encouraged by some, by, by some very kind and loving people around me. We're only going for two days. Penny started a new job. She works for a new company. She doesn't have the time built up. So we're going to leave Friday, midday. She gets off of work. We're going... I better not tell y'all, because y'all going to come and pull up in the spot next to me. Hey, pastor. 
I'm like, I'm trying to get away from you. <laughs> Whoa. No, I'm kidding with you. No, seriously, though. Um, we're going to Anastasia State Park, taking our camper. We're going for two nights, okay? I don't know if you know this, but the Flor state of Florida has a state park um, website. And you don't have to talk to anybody. You can actually go ahead in any state park and, and reserve a site at a campground. You've got to pay for it and all of that. But they don't tell you up front. You go through all of this rigmarole, going through it on the phone, all of it, putting your address in, putting everything. I mean, all of this stuff. How long the trailer is, this and that. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. 20 different screens you go through. And all of a sudden, it won't let you... Do it unless you s sign up. So I'm like, well, okay, I'm going to go sign up, and it'll, it'll bring me back to where I was. <laughs> no. Listen, not once, not twice, not three times, and not four times, but five times I went through it. Because you get to a certain point, and then, and then it just nothing happens. It, it, it just whoo just goes in a circle and circle and circle and I'm thinking there is one site left at Anastasia State Park and I'm going to lose it because of this stupid thing. Penny's sitting right there and she goes well let me let, let me help you with it and I'm like no! Man I was getting uptight. I was just getting all crazy. Right Kelly? I mean it just wasn't working for me. I was just like mm -hmm. we're house sitting or, or cat sitting our daughter's demonic cat and uh <laughs> She, 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 she's, she's, she's possessed, I'm telling you. And so we've got all that going on in the house, and I'm trying to get all this locked in, and, and I'm struggling with it. And, I, man, I could see my attitude just deteriorating. Well, as it all turned out, finally got it done, got it locked in. Pretty cool, too, $58. I even got to claim the senior citizen's discount. First time in my life. It was pretty awesome. And um, we got it done, and Penny looks at me and she goes, You happy now? And I went, No, but I'm not stressed anymore. And it reminded me, she goes, You get so stressed out. I said, It's these electronic things. I, I want to press a button and they'd go, Corey, we got it settled for you. That's what I want. I want somebody to come up with something that would understand what I'm trying to do. Make it easy. <laughs> so, the cat could even tell that I was not happy. And the Lord reminds me through circumstances and situations like that, that you know, you, you, you got all worked up. You might have lost two days of your natural life because of artery damage you did and all of that because you got all bent out of shape about something that doesn't matter and after next weekend you're not even going to care and the Lord reminds me you've got a lot more to learn from me Corey you know it but boy you haven't applied it to your life you see what I'm saying learn Jesus is saying, learn from me. But here's the other thing, too. So after a little bit, I walked outside, had me a cup of coffee late yesterday evening, and I said, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry for being stressed out. You know what I got from him in my spirit? I didn't get condemnation. I didn't get, well, you ought to feel that way for the next three days. No. I got a gentle and humble Savior who provided rest for my soul and reminded me that next time you don't have to be stressed out if you come to me take from me and learn from me look at what 1 John 5.3 says <clears throat> 1 John 5.3 in fact this is love for God Notice, to keep his commands. 
you might think, man, that is burdensome. And his commands are not burdensome. His commands are not burdensome. In other words, he's saying, I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My commands are not burdensome. Actually, my commands will free you from bondage. It will free you from from the concept that the world has. It will free you from trying to be a works-based person in the sense that you've got to earn God's love. No, you don't earn God's love. It's unearned. God loves us because he's God. And when we keep his commands and we learn from him that his commands are not burdensome. So in wrapping all this up, are you weary? Are you tired? Have you taken on too many things in your life that You feel like you're carrying a cargo ship on you. Some of it is responsibility. And that's the way God designed you, to give you that responsibility. But in that responsibility, as a Christian, you're to turn to him. So how do you find that rest? Jesus gives us, and I don't like to use the word prescription. It's not something we can... You know, one, press three buttons, like I was saying just a minute ago to make it so much easier. But what he is reminding us, you, you've got to do something here. You, you, you and I, I have to come to Jesus. Now, I've got to be willing to take what he gives me. And in taking those beautiful truths that he gives me, <clears throat> I've got to be willing to learn. And to learn. And when I do those things, I'm convinced that he provides the kind of rest that we need mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you know, and physically. I think physically, we're more apt to get the rest that we need because we we feel it. And we know there's only one one way to, to, to take care of this, and that's to recover by sleep, by rest, what have you. But spiritually and emotionally, sometimes it's harder for us to recognize this. And so I want to encourage you. You've got to learn. You, me, we we all have to learn how to rest because there is a rest for the weary soul. And I know some people say this, well, you know, Pastor, the Bible says ultimately we will enter into God's rest. But Jesus is talking about rest while we're here on this earth. There can be some. And that kind of rest can can be what we need on a regular basis. I'm not talking about going to take a vacation necessarily, even though you can find rest in that. How many of you, be honest, how many of you at some point in your life you took a vacation and when you got back you felt like you needed a vacation from your vacation? Right? Especially when you have little kids. All right? I remember I had the privilege, whew, it's been a while now, uh, Colleen and Rex, but uh, we had the privilege to go to their place uh, on Abaco um, there in the Bahamas quite a few years ago. My kids were younger and we took them all. And I, and I remember this. It's one of those times, Colleen, that it was imprinted on my mind and heart. I don't know if you remember seeing me do this. Remember I'd sit at the, uh, at the picnic table early in the morning under, the, under those palm trees, and sometimes I would lay in that hammock. Uh, actually, um, that hammock uh, under the palm trees with the light lapping of the water of Casarina Bay or Point or whatever it is right there. You want to talk about salt life? Ooh, you talk about God give you some rest. But I remember every morning I'd wake up, I'd eat some fresh fruit, I'd be sitting on that picnic table, and I'd just read God's word. I, I had no, no agenda, just, just, just spending a little time with the Lord. I, I, I purposely left the pressures of ministry and all of that on the mainland <laughs> or back in the States. 
And it was one of those moments in my life where I, I this unbelievable amount of spiritual, emotional, physical rest came upon me that I think gave me what I needed for the next 10 years in that one week period. So much so that I have often tried to recapture that kind of rest again. And I have found this too, that you don't have to go away to get rest. But you can, you can find, if you can't find rest in your everyday life from time to time, you're not going to find it by going away. It'll be temporary. God wants us to have, Jesus wants us to have the kind of rest that we need. That even in the midst of a storm, we can bring our weary and tired hearts, souls, frustrations to him. And we will, the Bible says, we will find rest for our souls in Jesus. In Him. Isn't that amazing? Here, I'm closing up, I promise you. I end with this. Listen, young people, listen to me. Not everything in life needs to be put on social media. Not everything in life needs to be full speed, 100 miles an hour. You know, you don't need a parachute to skydive. You need a parachute to skydive twice. I saw that quote this week, by the way. I didn't make that up. I saw it somewhere. That's good. You can be going so fast. I don't know if you know this, but a guy who had over 800 jumps, 800 skydiving attempts, got so complacent, he jumped out of the plane without his parachute on. He did. It's complacency that got him. And thump, he hit the earth and he died. The point I'm I'm making is this. You can be in the fast lane and living life so fast. And you can jump out of that plane without a parachute one time. If you don't rest. (laughs) No. (laughs) If you don't think and trust the Lord in your life for the long haul. You need it so we can finish well. I want to finish well, y'all. I I don't want to be the the guy that people would say, man, boy, for 20 years or 30 years, boy, he was this wonderful man. But boy, I tell you what, he, you know, he, he blew it at the end. And I'm going to blow it if I don't learn from Jesus. I'm going to blow it if I don't come to Jesus. I'm going to blow it if I don't take what he has for me. Because I don't have the power and strength to stand up with these heavy burdens upon me. Without him. And neither do you. Let's stand together, everybody.